Damn it. Okay. Sorry. That took me a while. Um, apparently, you actually have to click a go live button instead of just start streaming uh, when you schedule stuff. I'm learning, but I think I've kind of roughly figured it out. Uh, but let me make sure my phone is muted so I can look at chat because all of my stuff is over there. And then let's have a fun time. Does that sound good to you? Having a fun time? Well, there is still some setup left to do. Firstly, the so I've got my, uh, hopefully this wireless keyboard works pretty reliably. Yeah, there we go. So this is, this is the DSLR here. And so hopefully I will be able to match the uh, shutter speed with the CRT, but I haven't even started playing with that yet. Um, Lawless says hi. Hi, Lawless. Uh, let's get started. I need a chair. BRB. So, casual stream, but I'm still on you know, a bit of a timetable. We have a dinner time scheduled, and that's cool. Okay, so this is going to be weird because I have to look at a monitor that's halfway across the room to try and see if the screen is flickering. The cool thing is, it's in the middle of a Mac OS 8 install, and Mac OS 8, crazily enough, uh, supports sleeping. <laughs> so uh, the computer has been sleeping in the middle of an install this whole time. So that looks not bad. Let me adjust some stuff really quick, and then we will finish this Mac OS 8 install, which is retail, don't you know? Let's see. We can stand it tighten up on that bad boy. You know what kind of computer this is. I don't need to frame anything but the screen. Oh, come on. Seriously, this is the world's cheapest tripod. Okay, that's something. And I can only go, I'm, I'm tethered via USB, so I can only go so far. Um, okay, now, let me mess around and see if there's a way to adjust my shutter stuff, which seems to be kind of doing okay, but I bet I can do better. Hold! It's going well, Daniel Rodriguez. That is how it's going. Oh man. Also the uh the stream looks much less sharp than what I'm getting from the camera, which is a huge bummer. Yeah, excellent low res stream. Great. Well it's either that or have the thing drop constantly, so anyway. Well, I'm messing with you. Oh, doo dee doo, doo dee doo, ba ba ba. Okay. Apparently, in my little camera control software, I can't control such things as uh, shutter speed, so. Time to mess around on the camera, huh? It, it is still running, by the way. I realize the uh, the image freezing and the, everything going very quiet might scare you. Don't let it. Everything's fine. It's just that I'm in the menus. for adjusting aperture value. And boy, I should I should have studied up on my camera first. That's still aperture value, which I think we can knock down a bit. Sure. Um 
that'll just maybe have to do. Uh, let me do some manual adjusting so that the screen is maybe a touch more sharp. Ooh, that was very, very in focus for a second. I'm also focusing this camera from across the room, so that's fun. And if I try and autofocus it, it's focusing on a shiny CRT that is emitting light. It's not going to do a great job. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. All right. I'm, I'm happy with that. Are you happy with that? Because I'm happy with that. Let me just tilt this bad boy up a little bit. The flicker is, it could be better, but it could be much worse, so it is what it is. So I think it's time to get this party on. <clears throat> all right, so finishing installing Mac OS 8 is what we're all about right now. And making sure this works. Hi! Yay! Sweet. Uh, let's adjust this a little bit too, huh? Maybe? Touch. Yeah, this is supposed to be the uh, the me cam. Sick. So, oh, uh, and a bit of you may have seen this in the background of my videos, but this is literally what I'm using right now for this install. This is a box copy of Mac OS 8. It cost me 50 bucks. It was a really, really stupid purchase decision, uh, but it's kind of cool because I mean it was literally 50 bucks for a box that's in pretty decent condition. A handful of paper and oh there there's a couple like disk utilities floppies in here sealed probably never open them I realize this is not about BIOS you came here for BOS but uh, I spent money on this so I might as well get my get my fill out of sharing it yeah this cool this cools floppies never used and the disk of course is in there so you can't see that right now. But we're installing off a retail disc, which is infinitely funny to me. And there. There's the there's the sleeve. Which I did not break the seal on, so not that special. Anyway, uh, we're as far as installing Quick Draw 3D, so let's do that. And let me pay attention to chat. Uh Right, Daniel's from Daniel. Daniel's from Chile. Uh, cheers to you. Uh, cheers reminds me that um, it's a Friday and I forgot to get beer, which is just a shame. Just a shame. Uh, Trade MC says, "Hey, nerds. Hey, Trade MC. Hello." Uh, Cliff Cheney says, "Hey." Trade MC says, "Flicker City. I know. I'll try and fix this up for a future time." Uh, also, the flicker I know is not helping the stream quality because the pixels are changing constantly. Um, so, sorry. But I really can't... I'd have to stop streaming and start streaming again to change the, uh, the resolution and the bitrate. So, tis what it is. Uh, Cliff Cheney says looks fine. Dave Wall says, what kind of camera is that, I wonder? Canon DSLR? And it is. It is a... Who I uh, running running Magic Lantern too, but I have been unimpressed with Magic Lantern. I think it's more interesting if you actually are a photographer. I was hoping it would be fun as a as a computer nerd person. Oh, Open Doc, we're doing Open Doc now. I thought it'd be more interesting as a computer person for some reason, but uh, it's all about doing camera things that I don't particularly care about. <laughs> Trey Dempsey says, back in the day, Mac OS 8 cost me many hours to download at 28.8. Yeah, those were the days. Ooh, I'm going to have to stop turning off my phone. I've gotten very used to doing that. But that that is no longer the way, because that's where I got my chat now. Like I'm a professional YouTuber and shit. Um, yeah, for some reason that makes me remember... Uh, does anyone else remember the long, long period that still technically hasn't ended where people were petitioning... Uh, MacLink Plus. I don't know what this does. I just chose the installer. Right now. But uh, when everyone was petitioning Apple since they had uh, released uh, up through like Mac OS 7.5.3 uh, 
um, on their servers as, you know, free use. And everybody is saying, for God's sake, release Mac OS 8 the same way. And they never did. And now it's too late. Because who fucking cares anymore? And it's not like people are downloading Mac OS 7 off of the Apple servers anymore, so kind of a moot point. <laughs> Dave Wall says, Magic Lantern makes my palms sweaty. Yeah, no, that's my exact feeling. I thought I would, I thought I would enjoy the extra control. And mainly I installed it because I thought I was going to be doing HDMI capture out of this thing, and uh, Magic Lantern on the T2i will do um, uh, clean HDMI output if you do that, but uh, that turned out sucking. I did that for my first couple of streams, and I ended up just paying 60 bucks for Sparko Cam, which lets you use the uh, T2i as a webcam via USB, and it's been very nice. Worth all the money. Between between that and uh, the new lens for this camera, uh, probably pretty break even on uh, my income on this channel versus shit I've bought for it. So I mean that that seems appropriate. Um, Dave Wall says touching the firmware, but I guess this is what this channel is all about. Yeah, but also not being good at it. So there's that. Uh, and Trey says, 761 and later have licensing issues, if I recall. Yeah, like, my brain over, only goes up to 753, I think, just because those are the ones that are available. And location manager, for those of you playing along at home. I also don't know what this does. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I don't remember what the highest version of 7 is. Like what? What's past seven six one? I forgot there were seven sixes. Look, I own a lot of Macs, but I don't know that much. I mostly own Macs for nostalgia's sake. Um, firstly, I always wanted uh, Power Mac five thousand series because I don't know. I feel like we had these in school somewhere, almost surely. I mean, these are clearly a excellent educational PC as far as Macs go, because all-in-one and, uh, well, I guess all-in-one is pretty much all I'm getting at here. <laughs> uh, but so I, I had a bunch of nostalgia in there, and then I was always looking for one, and then they kind of became hard to find for some reason. I think possibly because the plastics, because the plastics are so ludicrously brittle on, I've had two of these. This is the second one. I don't remember the actual model of what the other one was, but um, regardless, same chassis. These plastics, also, uh, I mean, it's it's the same, like, era. I have, you probably saw it on earlier streams. Um, here, alternate camera angle while this is installing. Uh, this Power Max something, 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 something. Are you seeing a theme of me not really being as knowledgeable as I should be. Uh, 8500 132, that's what this bad boy is. Um, so actually pretty pretty equivalent to this guy, but this is a 180, so it's a touch faster, actually. And this I uh, install, I've installed so many things on it. This is run Rhapsody. It runs Rhapsody pretty decently, which is cool, because um, I had never run Rhapsody PPC before. But the point being, um, plastics, horribly brittle. If you can see, uh, maybe, there's tape right here because this has no more clips on it at all. And I haven't been that aggressive with this thing. And there's also no power button because, like, that broke literally just from pressing it. So, yeah, I dare not ever... I pretty much destroyed the other one I had trying to take the shell off. And so I'm never opening this thing. And... Even to, like, slide the uh, logic board out, not doing it, because there are clips on that log on, on the cover for the logic board, and it's horrific. Actually, I already broke one of them, and I was trying to be very careful. <clears throat> and sadly, the other one I curbed, I think because it was falling apart, if my memory serves correctly. 
Not like I didn't have to. It's just I was transporting a pile of things, including my big ass pile of computers from Queens back to Michigan. And I was like, eh, this can stay, which was kind of dumb. But now, now I have another one. But the other one was fun because I had, when I moved to New York in the first place, I had curbed a bunch of my uh, computers that I had kind of been collecting, which I didn't have a huge collection, but at the time I had a, what did I have? I had a... HP Visualize J5600, that was sweet, that made a great home server for a long time. And I had my Octane, I had a Apple II Plus, um, that was pretty dope. Um, and then, I, that one, the story isn't so sad because I was playing with it and I left it at a hacker space. So it didn't just get curbed. I, I understand somebody found it in the back room and gave it a good home. So I'm happy about that one. What else did I have? It was a it was a modest collection. Um, like that really may have been it. Oh, I had I had some kind of Spark One U server thing for fun. Um, but yeah, curbed all that stuff when I moved to New York. So like, when I moved to New York, it was to do music stuff. So I didn't really have computer stuff. I was in small apartments. That wasn't really a thing, and I wasn't focused on it. Um. By the way, apparently we're installing uh, fonts? No, text-to-speech. Yay. And anyway, so this whole thing is about the story about my first 5000 series chassis machine, which it, I got from the much lauded, much spoken about, uh, apparently we're installing Apple Remote Access stuff. Cool. Uh, New Jersey Hall, which we can have a, a longer conversation about sometime. Um, so that came in the New Jersey Hall, and I was very excited about it. But uh, backing up again, um, wasn't collecting computers, was doing the band stuff, and then just got a wild hair to get a um, like a Quadra 600-ish. Let's see which ones are it. Because I had, I had again, this goes back nostalgia stuff, what, whatnot, whatnot. Uh, I when I was a teenager, I had a 638 CD. Which is kind of a kind of a pizza box situation. They're the like the thick boy pizza box. And that was the first Mac I ever had. So I got a wild hair up my butt that I was like, I would really like another one of those. And I got one off of eBay. And that was like the first computer I collected in a couple of years. And something ended up happening to that, but I ended up taking the logic board from that and putting it in my five thousand series chassis, because the five thousand that was in there wasn't very good. It may not have even worked, I can't remember. And then once I put that that logic board in there, because it's just a same same connector and everything, uh, it was a badass machine. So that's the whole story boiled down about the previous one. Um, I think we're done with the Mac OS 8 install, which would be pretty sweet. Cool. All right. And I've already, I guess I can run... Uh... Nope, wrong. Some disk utilities to demonstrate the whole reason that I'm installing Mac OS 8 first, because I actually had already installed BOS, and then I remembered that I actually had to go back and do this, because BOS does not want to format HFS partitions, and uh, Mac OS does not like that there is a BOS partition on there. It won't just initialize a partition, which is fun. That's not the right thing. Uh, utilities, there we go. And... Yeah, so you have to do it the right way around, and I had done it the wrong way around. So we're doing it the right way around now. So, just to, just to demonstrate, in drive setup, I've got an 8 gig drive in here. And someday it will enumerate it. And I'll just show you the two partitions that we got going on. Um, and I'm going to read some chat, because I have been yakking on for a little bit. Uh... Trey says, there's nothing past 7.6, just 8. Um, and Copland Super Secret Betas, which I would love to play with. Not not like high on my list, might probably never happen, but it would be fun to watch it break and be frustrated. <laughs> Cart, uh, Cracker Jackful says, good old days, slow and nice. That's darn right. 
Um, Cliff Shaney said, just noticed the sweatshirt. Yeah, I should have, uh, I should have pointed that out. I have that on, on purpose. We'll get back to that for the people who haven't noticed. Um, I guess, yeah, here's the custom setup is I have this disc Mac OS, Untitled 2. They're both HFS right now, but the idea is I'm going to take Untitled 2, reformat it with DFS in a second here, and call it a day. Um, cancel, 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 cancel. Don't break anything. Uh, let's eject everything and reboot, I suppose. Stop, please. Everything is very unresponsive because I am actually running off the floppy right now. I decided to boot off a disk tools floppy for some reason. I think it's because I was having issues reading floppies on this machine and I wanted to test it and it boot just, booted just fine off of this disk, disk utility floppy, so I don't know what's up with that, but it's not important right now. Uh, eject this. That's the boot thing, so I guess we just restart. I'm very good with computers. Oh, uh, Trey says, is this a molar Mac? No, 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 God, no. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, God, no. Those cost, like, a life. And I'm not even that interested in having so, no, 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 no. I'm actually surprised that, because this is, like I, said, uh, like I was saying, this is a Power Mac 5000 series chassis. And I don't know how good this camera angle is, and I'm not going to try and improve it. It's too late for that. Um, but it, it's the all-in-one that predated the, uh, the Molar Mac. And I love this design. It's basically just like a... What what is this like a fourteen inch monitor, fifteen something like that, uh, with a with a thick boy performa glued to the bottom of it, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I like them for no good reason, and I'm surprised that they aren't like more collectible. I mean, I guess I I spent money on this, so it's not like they're not collectible. But also, maybe I'm just the idiot who uh, would spend money on something like that. It sat around for the whole VCF show. I bought it on the last day. I probably could have negotiated the price down a little bit harder. Uh, but it was it was over 100 bucks. It was like 150. Probably not a great deal. But I really I really wanted a, another 150. And VCF is one of those things where like, you know, it's a it's a treat yourself situation. And I didn't see much else that was calling out to me this year. So, I got this bad boy. Um, and the fun thing is, speaking of buying it, oh, if you want to boot if you want to watch Mac OS 8 boot up, here we go. One second. That's enough of my face for the moment. There we go. Uh, I don't know how good that's looking, but you're getting what you're getting. Uh, wow, I go off on tangents. Forget where I was. Um, but yeah, computer, cool. It's great. This was a treat. Myself. Oh, oh, the buying it. So the guy, when I was talking to the guy about the price. He was like, yeah, well, you know, the thing is, it also includes, uh, you know, it's got the, the, the video capture card in there, which is pretty cool. I don't know that I'd ever use it for anything, but my 638 CD had that back in the day, and I used to play video games through it that way, which was great. Anyway, and he says, and uh, it's also got an Ethernet card in there, and I was like, well, an Ethernet card is compelling. And I took it home and I popped it open, and I am fairly certain the Ethernet card that's in there is not a Mac compatible Ethernet card. It's a PCI Ethernet card. One of the neat things about this actually, uh, I think, is that this is, it must be like one of the last 5000 series because it's a PCI 5000 series, which I didn't even realize was a thing. Um, so there's a PCI Ethernet card in there. It's a, it's got one of the DEC, uh, you know, chips on it. And as far as I can tell, doesn't, there are no drivers for it for Mac OS. Um, it's not branded by any... Oh, we have to do this first time set up. Mm, my name is Poop. My computer, my company organization is Poop Co. Um, anyway. 
sure. It's whatever time you want it to be, baby. Uh, let us let us say Detroit. That's where I'm at. Detroit. Uh, no, no simple finder. Anyway, yes, poops computer. That's what I would like. No password, please. Um, so anyway, I'm curious to see if that works under BOS. I feel like it probably will. And yeah, like I said, it's not it's not branded with any of the brands that made PCI Mac Ethernet cards. Though I was surprised because I've seen things that look like they use that chipset that are... Uh, I can't remember the brands right now. I downloaded some drivers and I tried them and they, they didn't do anything. But Anyway, we'll, we'll see if that works in BOS because BOS supports so many things. And also I'm going to install the developer tools because that is super fun. I mean, if you're a developer and an old computer person. Um, their, their IDE, the BOS IDE kind of sucks. Oh, come on. I don't want to put in a password. My password is also poop. Go ahead. Um, yeah, great BOS video with uh, Mac OS 8 for the first however long it's been of it. We're almost done here. Good. Okay. Quit. Please. All right. So here comes the cool part. I feel like I was in the middle of saying something, but whatever. That, that is my way. This is what you get with live streams. Um, let's read some chat and get the 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 BOS 5.0 professional edition that is a legit backup copy and definitely not downloaded from WinWorld PC. Which I mean, just what an amazing site! Anything you can imagine, it's on WinWorld. Um, yeah, let me let me read a touch chat and then I want to talk about booters and stuff because. Mac OS booters are weird. Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, there's a good amount of activity. It's probably because it's Friday. Um, here, reading the cell phone. Oh yeah, so I'm picking up at Cliff Cheney saying just notice the sweatshirt. So firstly, uh, I hope I hope Francois has a chance to come on. Um, but yeah, this was one of the things I bought off of Freeware. I highly recommend this. Firstly, because I mean the Haiku project could you, could use some cash. Come on. Come on, they're broke. Nobody cares about Haiku. Um, I mean, I care very much about Haiku, but that's beside the point. Uh, but this, I, I mean, they've got such a good logo. It makes a great shirt. Um, and I believe Francois was saying, I, I think he does Haiku development. Um, so uh, these donations might be going straight to him. Probably not, because uh, he is almost assuredly not a paid developer on that project. Dave says, only 20 minutes late to the party tonight. No, you haven't missed shit. We're just about to get into the BOS stuff because I just finished the Mac OS 8 install. Um, Eric Stearns asks if I am installing R5 or something earlier. Uh, R5. Um, I've, I feel like I've played with uh, like 4.5 and whatnot and haven't had luck. Or we'll see. Maybe it was the other way around. Um, but because I, I have installed, like I, I think I was starting to say, but I didn't finish. I've installed like all the alternative operating systems on uh, the Power Mac tower over there that I have. I, I love that machine. Um, and that includes BOS and it was a beautiful smooth experience. So this is not my first ride, but I don't know how compatible compatibility with this machine will be. Uh, Trey said hi to David. <laughs> Jacob David Cunningham says, sorry. Jacob says, you're just missing a small inflatable pool. As a, as a recent father, I am very much, on a completely unrelated note, looking forward to buying a kiddie pool and then just hopefully the kid gets bored with the pool and I can just sit in the kiddie pool and drink beer. And that will be the summer. And I'm excited about that. Taco Man said, man, I miss my Mac G3. Um... I've gone through a few. Oh, that's one that I had. Is for a long, long time I had a uh, uh, blue and white. I can't remember which blue and white G3 tower it was, but um, yeah, because I think I think the second Mac I ever owned was an iMac, and I believe it was a Bondi iMac, and I got it for like thirty bucks when you could get a Bondi iMac. I mean, this was when I was in high school, probably like seventeen, so like two thousand seven. Um, that thing was dope. I installed Ubuntu on it, which was the first time I ever heard about Ubuntu. 
uh, that was cool. And then I took that thing to Japan with me when I lived there when I was... Uh, oh, I guess that I, I must have been... Because I was 15 when I moved to Japan. So I must have gotten it before that. And I, t I pulled out the guts, turned it into a, a NetBSD machine, um, and put put the guts in an, in a uh, ATX case for no good reason. And my blue and white, my blue and white I got at a junk shop in Japan. I think I've talked about the junk shops. That was such a great experience. They're probably not as good as they used to be. Um, but that was, I installed OS X on it. It was like my baby for a long time. And I curbed that one too. Yeah, when I moved to New York, a lot of stuff was lost, lost, lost. And now my buddy Brian, uh, when I was living in New York last, got one and he had it. And I believe he like said I could have it and I had it for a while and then he took it back. And so I don't know if that's one that I regret because I don't actually remember if he was saying he would give it to me. Um, but he has, he has several other nice, uh, like G4s and stuff. So I would love a G3 someday, but G3s and G4s, Power Max are getting stupid. Anyway, let's dive into this or I could talk all day and we'll get to some more chats in a second. I know I'm behind on them, but y'all got to slow down. I'm getting too popular. There's more than seven people watching my video at a time and that's just crazy. So back to here. I have my things backwards. Oh no, it's just very slow at updating. Uh, let me take a quick look, just because now that we have a nice color screen, uh, let me see if I have to adjust aperture or brightness or whatever. Because I can't tell. Oh no, that looks pretty good. I'm just looking at my uh, reference monitor from a really oblique angle, so it looks terrible from over there, but cool. So for those who have not booted alternative operating systems on a 68K or early PPC, you know, old world PPC Mac before, um, it's a hoot. And I, I want to talk about it because you'll see I open this. Firstly, it just shows up as BOS tools because that's the session that's on here that can be read by either a Windows machine or a... Uh, Mac, or apparently there's a GNU folder in here, which is interesting. I have never looked at this. Uh, oh, this is the GNU sources for redistribution. That's neat. I mean, I, I'm glancing at that. I assume that's what it is, but that is interesting. Um, anyway, so they in this Macintosh folder, they have, let's see, Mac Utilities... Ooh, is this for converting true type fonts? I haven't dug into this too much. I've mostly just installed. So you're giving me an interesting thing. But uh, yes, so there is this OS chooser and there is the BOS launcher. Uh, I believe, I'll read the readme later. We don't need this right now, but uh, this is an extension should be. You drop it in your extensions and at startup, um, it basically gets to that extension. When it gets to loading that extension, halts the whole startup procedure, gives you a little dialogue that says, do you want to boot Mac OS or BOS? And then you, you know, choose, choose the one. Um, BOS launcher just launches BOS. So we'll start with this, but uh, it makes me, as this comes up, want to talk about these kinds of Mac booters in general because they're, I don't get them. Here's the thing is, there's that, that cool B logo. I do enjoy that. Um, so there is, you find very, very little do you ever find natively bootable Mac software. And I don't get it because I always assumed it was because the Mac, like, uh, boot procedure and, and specs for that kind of stuff was, like, not well documented or not well standardized. It's well documented and perfectly well standardized. I don't get it. There is... Uh, Emil, if anybody's familiar with the Emil project, if you're not, you should go check it out. It's E-M-I-L-E? -E? Early Macintosh Image Loader. Um, but it's really cool because it uses that standard for booting that Macs freaking have and uses it for making bootable floppies so you could, you know, like uh, uh, any multi-boot 
compatible operating systems like Linux or whatnot, um, you can boot directly off of a, a floppy. But it's so weird to me in light of that, that basically, uh, like, Linux, like, the if you want to boot uh, Debian or, you know, any other PPC or 68K Linux distro, you use the same kind of booter thing that since classic Mac OS is, you know, a completely unprotected uh, operating system where everything runs at the same privilege level, uh, and so any program can just hijack the machine, uh, that is that is what they use. And I, I always assumed it was because, like, it was just not, it was non-trivial to boot media on a Mac, and it's actually very trivial. Um, I have a project, just a little tiny project on my GitHub that's just a floppy image that is bootable and starts playing around with stuff. It's it's very simple. It doesn't do shit, but I just wanted to play with it. And it's super easy, and it would work on any Mac with a floppy drive. And I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Anyway, uh, this is BOS. Uh, so if you've never seen BOS before, firstly, I mean, just look at... Can you see... I mean, you're not using my hand... You, you don't, maybe I'll move around some windows in a second, but like the smoothness, it is, it is palpable. It is obvious. Like coming out of Mac OS 8 into just the BOS installer, it feels like a freaking whole different machine. I don't know how Mac OS is that bad. <laughs> I just don't get it. And this is so much more of a capable operating system. Anyway, we'll, we'll do more of that here, but look, it's a license agreement. And we're going to agree to it. And, of course, you've got that pleasant blue color in the back. I really do like that. Um, I stole it for P5, my operating system. I don't think I stole that actual color, but uh, that and, like, some of the NT blues. I love them. Um, so, yeah. Oh, dragging around Windows, right. Okay, so that's a little more chunky, but it's mostly just because of VSync. And it's not sync to VSync. But look at that. Look at how pretty that is. It's amazing. It's so smooth. The only problem I'm having is because this is a dirty ball mouse, and it's not on a pad. But, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I was talking earlier about the, uh, or yesterday, I think, on stream. I was talking about the BOS installer and how interesting it is because it is... So I think I installed Haiku before I ever installed BOS. No, that's not true. I installed BOS on a PC ages ago. It was, yeah, right. Um, one of the first alternative operating systems I ever messed with it was very easy to do. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, so I think I kind of, you know, I didn't know if this installer was the same for all BOS type things, and it is. It's just like a dialogue, and then it just copies files, and then it's done. And it's just like, why would an operating system need installer need to be more complicated than that? Anyway, so that's our macOS partition. We do not want to uh, install over that. I guess, I guess the little booter applications are probably mostly because uh, if you want to be dual booting uh, Mac OS and some alternative operating system, um, I would imagine Mac OS probably doesn't like existing on the same system boot-wise with another operating system, but whatever. Uh, let's install Japanese. Hell yeah. And of course, like I said, I'm going to... Stupid ball mouse. I'm going to install the development tools. Uh, GNU source code, because why not? And media, yeah. And I'm also going to do setup partitions. I don't know if it will format that partition automatically for me, but I am going to format it anyway. So this guy, here's all my crazy partitions that are mostly hidden by macOS because they don't want you to know about them. And we've got this HFS partition called Untitled 2. And I will go to setup. And, oh, setup, initialize. Untitled 2, B file system, and I'm going to call it BOS, I guess. BOS. Yes, destroy that data, baby. Kill it. Murder it. Um, do I want to mount it? I don't think so. Let's see, rescanning drives. Cool. There we go. Let's do it. Um, yeah, it would initialize the disk anyway. So, um, install as is, I suppose. 
Have you noticed that I'm paranoid? All right. Well, this is doing stuff because mostly it's just going to copy files for a while now. Let me read some more chat. And you can look at this beautiful, beautiful install dialog. Uh, <laughs> scrolling, scrolling, reading, reading. Trey said, that Twiggy Lisa was enticing at VCF, but oh my, the price. That's a lot for a shelf queen. Oh, if I, if I bought a Lisa, it wouldn't be a shelf queen. There's the first thing. Not that I am assuming you're uh, thinking that I would buy that, because of course no. Um, but yeah, that was cool to see anyway. But yeah, what was, they wanted 16 grand for it, which I feel like is probably like not a crazy going price, but whoo, why would you try and sell that at a show like that? Do rich people show up to VCF? I don't think so. Uh, Dave, uh, said, yay, tulip ethernet. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if you have already expanded below, but is that my ethernet card? I don't know. Trey said, I was yelling at, I was yelling tulip at my screen too. Okay, you guys are going to have to tell me what the hell this means, unless you already did. Um, Trevor Anderson says, just sold my Matt clone Daystar Genesis MP Quad 604. Quad 604? I didn't know that Daystar made a Quad 604. That's badass. I don't go that deep. I don't go that hard. I'm kind of surface on a lot of stuff, uh, which ran BOS. That reminds me, let me just dive into another freaking story. Um, I had from the, from the, uh, New Jersey Mac hall, um, I had a power computing, I am forgetting the model number now, but it was a, a pizza box, you know, like a PC style pizza box. And I want to say it was like a, like a 604, 120 or something. And so it was a pretty decent machine, and it would have been a badass BOS machine, because I think that's the perfect thing to use a Mac clone for, would be BOS. Because then you've got just, like, it's not even, the only thing Apple about it is the, you know, the spec and the ROM. And otherwise, you've got a non-PC, power PC machine running a non-Apple operating system. That's just like, it's not even a Unix workstation. It's just the coolest combination of things that I can even imagine. Which is why I even like installing BOS on, you know, this right here. Uh, still, I might keep this as just like my BOS machine. Uh, but yeah, I always thought that would be a cool setup and I never did it. And then I actually sold that machine. Um, embarrassingly, mostly just because uh, prices for those were really going up and I, I got a I got a pretty good deal out of it but you know regrets would be cool to still have but Santiago says I'm late uh eh. I'll probably be streaming for like another half hour um I would stream as long as I could if I could but uh we have a scheduled dinner time right now um so you're not really late we're just installing BOS now uh, Dave said supposedly an RTL 8139 card will work on OS 8.6. Is that the chipset I have? I don't know. Is that what Tulip is? I don't know. Uh, I was thinking about upgrading to 8.6 anyway, so. Freedom says nice, probably on the, uh, the RTL chipset things. Coding projects and stuff says neat about something I said hours ago. Dave said stroboscope of death. I know, Dave. I was gonna, I... You, I'm using the DSLR specifically because I was going to adjust the shutter speed, but then I didn't have time to do that before I... Look, just don't worry about it. It's as good as I can do right now. Uh, and Dave says, Mac OS ROM only knows how to load system. The toolkit doesn't understand how to load anything else. That is a lie. I think we need to talk about this because you're, you know more about most things than I do, but literally... Um, it doesn't need to know anything, like there is, there are sections in the HFS, like, boot block that describe things such as, like, the system, uh, you know, that where to load the system image from and whatnot, but, um, 
you don't have to use that mechanism. There is, like, firstly, it, it basically works like an IBM PC for the most part, and unless you uh, specifically use the, like, boot, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the only word I can think of is thunk, that is not the word, uh, the boot, the, the trap for, uh, that's provided in the ROM for boot up purposes, uh, which will handle loading the system cabinet and everything. Um, you can just run boot sector code, and uh, the trap for like reading sectors off the floppy is totally standardized across the toolbox for uh, all Macs. So it can load from a system cabinet, and you could you trick it. But you don't have to. Now, now it's about maybe it's about compatibility. Maybe there are things about compatibility across um, various different Macs that exist. But I I am not aware of anything like that. Emil works just fine. Um, Cliff Cheney says Flickr does seem to be gone now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I think it's the streaming software compensate trying to compensate for it. Uh, Vihapu says I like the Windows decorations on BOS. Also, my cat is very interested in your mouse cursor. Glad I could entertain your cat for a minute. And yes, the Windows deck the window decorations are super cool. Oh, you know what? Firstly, well, okay, couple things. Oh no, Japanese fonts are corrupted. <sighs> oh. Ignore. That is not an important system file. Um, I'll, I'll show some window tab stuff later because they're fun. Uh, and I learned some things that I didn't even know you could do with them. But it's an interesting approach. I don't know if it's the most ergonomic thing ever, but it's... yeah. Uh-oh. Bin CI appears to be corrupted. May not work correctly after it's installed. Well, I think I, I'm just going to hit ignore all because I'm not going to have time to burn a fresh CD. So we're just going to hope that most of those things that are corrupted are not things that are important to booting the system. Uh, anyway, yeah, Windows decorations on BOS. Neat. Not necessarily ergonomic in my experience, but neat. Trey said, I was fascinated by the BOS dual CPU machines. I'm fascinated by the Hobbit machines. Now, those are something that you cannot ever find. I don't know that a single one even exists anymore. But that's that's my holy grail. Um, that I'm not even looking for, so I don't know why I would call it a holy grail. Just a very cool thing on my list. Oh, Dave says, to change window themes, Control-Alt-Shift... And the B menu enables the hidden window decor menu entry. Putting that in the back pocket, right, that's a thing I want to see. I want to see dumb BOS tricks because, you know, mostly I've powered up BOS and or Haiku and poked around with them for a minute and then gone off and done other things. Because as cool as I think they are, I just don't have time to spend that much time with them. So, there you go. Uh, Trade MC says, refresh rate must be closer to the camera. There's a lot less flicker now. Again, I think it's just literally the streaming software compensating in some weird way because my phone does similar things and it looks very similar when it tries to match the flickering uh eric stern says bfs was a strong feature at the time it was released uh i understand that it is really cool and as from a systems perspective i really need to read whatever that um the technical book on it's like ostensibly for doing file systems, like if you want to learn how to implement a file system, um, but it is based around basically a case study of BFS, and apparently it's it's an awesome technical read. Really got to read that someday. Uh, but yeah, basically a database on disk. Dave Wall says, yeah, it looks way better. Oh, Trey says, Tulip is the code name of the deck Ethernet chip. So is there like really only one deck Ethernet chipset? Because that's what... And, like, on internet pictures, I haven't been able to clearly see, uh, you know, chip codes on the cards that I was looking at, so. And Dave says, Tulip is uh, DEC 266XX uh, Ethernet. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well then maybe at some point I'll have to get macOS 8.6 on here and see if it works. Because I think it was running macOS 9 or something stupid. I don't know which 9, but I think it was running macOS 9 when it was given to me, and I said no, no, no. So maybe it did work at that time. <laughs> Jacob says, to be or not to be? Oh, to be. That is certainly it. Um, Trevor Anderson says, BOS works better on multi-CPU than Classic, of course. I would imagine... Classic never really had multi-CPU support, did it? I don't think so. Because I think the only multi-CPU machines that existed that Apple made were New World machines. So, like, you might be able to run Mac OS 9 on them. And I don't think Mac OS 9 really had multi-CPU support, per se. But maybe I am making that up. Um, Santiago says, What's the difference between this professional and non-pro version of BOS? Can you change the theme? Although eye-catching, I don't like it. Oh, and Dave corrected, uh, 21XXX is the deck model number of those Ethernet chipsets. Um, apparently we can. Now, I don't know why you don't like it. It's freaking rad. Okay? And you just need to come to accept that right now. Um, one of the things I like most that isn't very obvious until, like, you really sit down and pay attention at a BOS system is that, like, Everything, and I think Haiku picked this up pretty well, um, even though they've made some changes to the to the look just a touch. Um, everything's got this kind of like soft, slightly plastically translucent feeling to it, which I don't really know what in specific about the colors and the pixel art that they kind of used to theme the windows does that, but... It's very satisfying. I don't know what it is. I really like it. Because, like, Windows, I, I love, you know, classic classic Windows chiseled look, but it's very hard looking. And I love Platinum. Platinum is also fairly hard looking, and Platinum, you know, it has this thing about it where it just looks like, you know, black and white Mac OS, but with some highlights. I love Platinum, for the record, but... I think my favorite classic, uh, classic kind of chiseled 3D look is BOS. It's just really pleasant. It's just it's a it's a maybe it's just that everything like all of the highlights and the low lights are a little little lower contrast, and maybe that's all that does it. But I like it. I really do. Um, Trey says, didn't Classic Mac multi-CPU support come from Radius? Uh, you tell me. I would love to hear stories about that. I have no idea. Oh, and I never got back to that question, Santiago, about what's the difference between the professional and non-pro versions of BOS. Fuck if I know, dude. Um, I assume it's just, like, maybe some of the stuff that comes with it, or possibly CPU limits. Um, I could not tell you. I chose Pro because it sounds better, but I, I know very little about BOS. Um, the, the deepest I am with BOS is that I, uh, when I was writing a multi-platform thing uh, and testing out to see if it, how portable it was across various systems, I made a, a wrapper to build it on Haiku, and so I had to learn about the basics of, uh, you know, writing, writing a Haiku app. And that's about as deep as I've gotten. Um, and I've tried, I tried to look at Haiku Source way back in the day when I was not as good at reading Source as I am now as an adult man. Um, but I, I didn't understand a lick of it because I was a young, I was a young child. So anyway, yes. T people tell me about the pro aspects of BOS Pro versus personal and tell me about Classic Mac multi-CPU support because... I want to know, and then immediately forget. Uh, oh, Trevor said, yeah, the OS didn't, but there are extensions you can use to Git code to run on the other CPUs. It's a workaround, so basically like some Photoshop plugins could utilize the CPUs for faster rendering. Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense that individual applications could use it because, like, the operating system doesn't give a shit. You have full control of the machine if you really want to, you know, mess with stuff. So if you just wanted to look at the manual and enable the second core and dispatch some code to it 
that would totally make sense. Huh. I wonder if, like, uh, I bet I bet old Pro Tools does that. There's another thing. As a, as a hack musician, um, getting, like, a really old Pro Tools system going, I think would be dope. Now, I hate Pro Tools. Not like I'm a, on a, because like, they're a bad company or anything. I have no idea how Avid is as a company. It's not that kind of thing. Just like as a, as an experience. It's like at every commercial studio uses Pro Tools. And yet, in my experience, like it's a terrible user experience. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, I love Cubase. I love Logic. Logic is awesome. Um, but yeah, like having having a really early logic system or a really early QBA system. Um, but I will give Pro Tools owns the market because Pro Tools was, you know, like the best, the earliest, um, as far as multi track audio recording uh, on a on a you know a computer goes. Um, but I feel like, you know, most people either threw away... There's a lot of custom hardware for those, um, you know, like new bus cards and stuff, because, of course, the, the computer, for the most part, is way too slow. So it needs everything that you can do to help it, like, DMA shit straight from the the um, ADCs, like, directly onto the hard drives, because otherwise there is no way it's going to be fast enough. Um, and so most studios, like hold on to that shit forever. Uh, musicians and, and uh, recording studios and stuff hold on to their equipment for a million years. They never let stuff go. Because, uh, like, you might need it someday. And it's such custom stuff. Like, sometimes you need to pull out the old machine to get, you know, old tracks off of stuff for later use and things like that. So they're really just not on the market. And when they are, they're crazy expensive. But I would really love to get, like, a 90s digital uh, DAW thing going on for no good reason. Uh, Trade Ups has said 9,500 MP, or am I misremembering? Oh, the, the, the radius stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. Trevor says the Daystar Genesis MP was the first multi-CPU Mac. So, I guess, yeah, Trey, Trey agrees, so. Um, oh, Coding Projects and Stuff says Reaper and Fruity Loops. I did play a lot with Fruity Loops back in the day, but Fruity Loops is, I am sorry to say, I feel like maybe you must be a, a youngin' because Fruity Loops is like early, early 2000s stuff. It is not. We're talking like early 90s, late 80s, when, when DAWs were like just starting to become semi-usable. By the time by the time Fruity Loops was coming around, like your your home PC could could do some pretty decent multi-track audio recording. No custom hardware required. Oh, Trade MC says Cakewalk. How could I forget about Cakewalk? Um, Cakewalk was like my first recording package. My dad one Christmas, my dad bought us a uh, just like an audio card that had RCA ins and outs, and that was really all it did. Besides probably having a pretty good, uh, you know, ADC and DAC on it. And so, like, me and me and my friends would hook up a mixer to it, and we were re recording a cakewalk, and we made some shitty demos that way, and it was awesome. Coding projects and stuff says, oh, wow, lol. Yeah, sorry, man. I mean, every, you know, the things you're nostalgic for and that you find interesting are completely relative to how old you were and what you were doing at the time. You think this is just hung? How long has it been sitting here installing Memorial Day? You think we will, uh... Let's see, what time is it? 7.08. Anyone got bets on whether we will actually get to the end of the BOS install before I have to leave? But yeah, so that's, like, for me, I'm interested in, like, the old Mac DAW stuff because that, like, just predates me oh no it's still going all right and uh so like the idea of it seemed like computers could just barely do multimedia stuff when i was you know a kid and a teenager 
So the idea that, like, there were DAWs around, like, ten years before that is crazy to me, and I want to play with them. I put, uh, I put a MIDI sequencing um, application of some sort. I don't think it was Cubase. I do need to get Cubase installed on there. But uh, on my LC? I don't think it's an LC2. I think it's just an LC. Um, and... It's, it's so... I mean, the LC is super slow. That's the problem. Like, just drawing the windows, it is painful. Um, and that was fun, but... Uh, this is definitely extra shit, so ignore it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it! But a real DAW with multi-track audio recording. That's the dream. My high school band used to do a lot of recording on, uh, first I had a Mac, uh, Mac Mini. That was uh, the G4 Mac Mini. It was like a 1.66 megahertz. Probably like two gigs of RAM, something silly like that. And then I moved over to, I hocked that thing and I got, because I really love the, what's the name for those cases? You know, like the blue, like the blue and white G3. The, the Power Mac G4 style cases, but, uh, you know, like a, uh, I think a gigabit Ethernet G4 that I put a Sonnet upgrade in, so it was just as fast as the Mac Mini was, even though it was, you know, much, well, not, not much older. That's the funny thing. It seemed like it was much older at the time, but it was really not that significantly older than the Mac Mini. And, uh, yeah. I think we ran Tiger on there, and they all are recording on Cubase, <clears throat> and uh, I love that. Everything was very easy to use, but also very powerful when we needed to do, I remember specifically, because we had some tracks that like we needed to do some tempo ramps on, but we wanted to use click tracks, and like drawing a, a tempo, um, I don't know, like a tempo chart. There's just a tool for that, and you click on the obvious place, and then you put some control nodes, and you're done. And it was so easy. And even, like, in Logic, even trying to find that shit in Logic 9, I don't know how the hell you do it. You can... Uh, there's, like, a track at the top that lets you set tempo changes. But, like, if you wanted to do a tempo ramp or something, it's... I don't know how you do it. I'm sure there's a way. Um... Installing Quick Brown Fox. Okay. But yeah, those are my memories. Cubase on Tiger. With the Firewire audio interfaces that I still have. And still use. Trevor says, Cakewalk and Finale. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Trey says, I need to set up a new recording setup. Been wanting to try it on Linux. Just got a seven string headless. Okay, now that's pretty metal. Be more from the late eighties. I I respect a headless guitar. I think they are uglier than sin. I don't know how I can reconcile those two things. I think they're an, a really neat idea. I think they're the, the worst looking guitars ever. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. You enjoy your your seven string. I have a, I actually have a seven-string Ibanez that I managed to pick up at Guitar Center ages ago for 300 bucks, which I thought was a pretty decent deal. It was used, but pretty decent deal for a, a seven-string. It's in great condition. It's pretty. It has nice hot pickups. The thing is, it's a great guitar. Even for like playing like clean jazzy stuff, it sounds nice. Uh, but at some point, like I had to steal a saddle from it, so it's only a six-string, <laughs> and I need to put that saddle back on and fix that guitar up and restring it. I have been woefully behind on doing music stuff. I'm not even, like, I'm not a big metalhead either. It was just the, the, I mean, I, I, I don't dislike metal. There's plenty of metal I enjoy. But, uh, not enough to, like, you know, that I make metal for fun. So having a seven string was more just about the gimmick of it. 
And Jacob said, smack it a few times. Might help. Percussive maintenance, says Trevor. Dave says, uh, BOS has some fun audio processing software. Yeah, I would imagine. That's on the list of things I'd love to play with. Um, right, and he says, and being able to patch uh, devices and media plugins together with the included software is pretty cool. Right, because basically, like, under the hood, it has... Well, I mean, like, all modern operating systems, that's how their audio subsystems work, is having, you know, multiple logical streams... Oh, it's done! Okay. Finally. Multiple logical streams of things that you can plug together, but, uh... Yeah, I know, because I forgot that I've played around with that, is that basically there's, like, a Jack-style interface, like, that comes with BOS for, uh, doing that. And that's just awesome. Cool. So here's the thing. It's gonna... I don't think it'll boot into the new BOS install, but I could be wrong. No. It's gonna boot into macOS. And then... I either need to use the BOS launcher again, or... I guess I could leave the CD in there. It's not like you can boot off of it. Um, or... Drop in that extension, restart the thing. Which, uh... I got 15 minutes. I, I, I can show that to you. I don't love the fact that the monitor hasn't turned back on. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I'm just going to kill the power. That is totally fine. You saw nothing. But yeah, gotta play around with that. Probably won't have time now. Trey Dempsey says, The headless is a joy to hold, especially in classical position. It's a Strandberg copy, so it has a lower leg cutout. Yeah, I kind of assumed it would be. Um, I can see that working. I can see them being very ergonomic. This is just a me being a crotchety old man. iHeartMac says, I remember some articles talking about how well-optimized BOS was and raving about the file system, of all things. Yeah, the file system is neat. To gloss over it, because I, I only am vaguely aware of the structure of the file system, but the cool thing about the file system is that... And I mean, like, at this point, like, NTFS, as far as I know, is kind of structured similarly. Um, but the idea is that... Uh, I should pause and say, for the real nerds out there, of course, there is there was supposed to be... Uh, oh, I'm forgetting now. But the, the file system that was supposed to be NTFS, uh, that they didn't have time to, to incorporate, um, was supposed to be a real-ass database file system. Anyway, so BOS is a database file system where basically, like, files just happen to be binary records in the database. Um, and, of course, they, you know, obfuscate that fact. Um, in the in the user interface and the you know access to the to the files and whatnot, so that it just looks pretty normal. But that means that you can, you know, everything is indexable, searchable, can have arbitrary metadata on it. Super super flexible, uh, you know, because it's structured. I think it's structured in that in, file systems and databases obviously are very similar for very obvious reasons. Um, because, I mean, a database is really just, like, a file system that's optimized for arbitrary data storage and access and uh, querying. Um, but they they are both largely based around various kinds of trees, and uh, BOS uses a B-star tree structure that is similar to how most databases store things and make things searchable. Um, so... Interesting fun stuff. Anyway, let's make sure I remember this properly. I'm going to take the OS Chooser. I believe this is an extension. The icon sure is weird for it being an extension, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Drop that shit in the system folder. Yes, I would like to put it in the extensions folder. Cool. Now I'm going to reboot. Uh, and yeah, the like speaking of the responsiveness and whatnot, like, macOS doesn't seem unresponsive right now. This is a pretty decent macOS 8 machine. Um, but, you know, still uses the uh, 
dotted window outlines and whatnot. Uh, in BOS, you can drag a whole window and it will just redraw as you go and it's totally smooth. And even like, for some reason, the mouse doesn't feel unresponsive right now, but then you get into BOS and it feels like butter. Like, it's weird. I don't know if it will come across on screen, but it's, it's almost surreal how freaking smooth it is. And it's a, it's a way more capable operating system to, to kick it all off or to top it all off. It's just fascinating. Anyway, I'm rebooting so that that, that extension will pop up and we can use it to boot because I'd like to show you that. Um, WinFS, Trey, Trey says. That's it. Um, yeah, no, it was definitely WinFS that I was thinking of. And it was supposed it was supposed to be very BOSy, where it was like a database file system, um, and everything was supposed to be able. To, yeah, here we go. There you go. Here we go. Start macOS. Start BOS. There you go. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was supposed to be similar, and they've they've talked about introducing it for a million years. Oh, and maybe it's I might have gotten that wrong too. Maybe there's some confusion because actually I don't think it was supposed to be for NT. I think it was supposed to be a long. That might be what's up. B, what's up? I, I might be wrong about that too, but it occurs to me that might be the story. That WinFS was supposed to be a big Longhorn upgrade. That never came, much like a lot of the stuff that was promised in Longhorn. I remember being so excited for Longhorn. My, uh, my cousin worked for Microsoft for a while. And mildly jealous of that because he... Ah, oh, dang it! Dang it! Dang it! You idiot! Damn it! <laughs> uh, this will just restart the machine, right? I had the CD in the drive. Forgot to take that out. So the uh, it preferentially boots off the CD before the hard drive, the, the BOS bootloader thing. So anyway, not accessing the hard drive. Don't worry about it. Here goes the power. Whoops. And then we're going to be able to see five minutes of BOS on the BOS stream. Yeah, Dave says, yep, Longhorn Beta WinFS. That's why I was confused. Or that's why I confused you. There are so many things that I'd like to play around with on this kind of fun Friday. I was initially worried that, like, maybe I won't have enough stuff to show off. But, like, I mean, come on. I have so much stupid shit. And I was just thinking, like, I would even love to do things like just do a do a look at the Emil project because it's interesting to me. And it's, like, super dead, too. Which is unfortunate. Which I guess makes sense because nobody's trying to boot Linux off of a PowerPC Mac anymore for any reasons unless you're like a retro computing hyper nerd but it's fun to look at the source but it also reminded me fun things like um open firmware you ever looked at uh the specs for open firmware and like some of the open source like yaboot code and stuff because it's neat like the the software interface for open firmware is actually really fucking cool um and made to be very accessible from C. All right, anyway, so we're, we're in BOS now. Look at this. Firstly, uh, a thing that you don't really get in Haiku anymore. Like, you have to use BOS if you really want the classic, classic look and feel because look at these beautiful isometric icons. I mean, Haiku sticks to the spirit of the thing, but man, you don't get you don't get these sweet isometric icons anymore except for in the real deal. Let's see, where are the good ones? So like in uh, like in applications, look at all those pretty things. Look at them. All of them, a work of art. Uh, okay, let's see. I have not, this is slightly faster than the, I believe, I just, I just pulled it up and I know I'm wrong about this. This is a 180. 
the tower might be like a 135. Is that what it was? Uh, let's do GLT pot <clears throat> if you want to see some interesting shit. Uh, that's actually not... That's a little worse than I would have thought. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to get it fairly small. So that's all in software on a Power Macintosh from, what, like 97? I don't know what year this came out. I realize, like, you know, there are graphics workstations from the same time that have actual hardware and would run this way better, but look at this. Software rendered, keeps rendering at the same FPS, basically, when you're moving the window. How insane is that? Now, of course, it will suddenly become horrific if I blow it up to full size, but still, in software, this, this, on a, on a machine, this kneecapped. Because <laughs> this is not a great machine. This is not a performance machine. But there you go. There is GLT Pot. Um, a classic. You always got to start there. So let me look back at my chat now. Because, oh, also, here's a thing that's existed in BOS since the beginning of time. This was not added in Haiku. Are you ready for something? First, you know, every, if, you, if you're not familiar with BOS, one of the things that if you just love alternating, uh, alternate desktop environments and whatnot, which of course I did when I was a kid, which is what like drew me to BOS, uh, it's like, ooh, it's got this cool, like as you open applications here, oh, that's Tracker, it's not gonna show anything new. Uh, let's open net positive. Yeah, so like the icons show up horizontally, or the tasks show up horizontally here. It's cool, it's different, it's crazy. Um, but since day one, doop. <laughs> there you go. Now it's Windows again. <laughs> and it's just a start menu. I, I love that. They're like, fine, we'll, we'll cater to you. Please just use our operating system. Or now I'm a Mac user. There's your Apple menu. Please, please buy our software. Um, okay, so anyway, I was going to look at chat. I was going to read Dave's uh, guide on the... <laughs> yes, Control-Alt-Shift-B menu. That's exactly what I was going for, Dave. Uh, Control-Alt-Shift-B menu. Very excited for this. Uh, where is it supposed to be? Try it again. Control Alt Shift B menu. Wait. Does anything change? No? Yes? Yes, no? Is it not the right version? Am I doing something wrong? One second. Reading the original one. To change window themes, Control Alt Shift and the B menu enables the hidden window decor menu entry. You think my version just doesn't have it? Let's let's try the right side. Control Alt Shift. Uh, is it in preferences or something? Oh, this mouse sucks so much ass. Am I missing it? Am I just missing it? Dave just says supposed to be there. Hmm, Dave. Hmm. Let's try Apple Control Shift. Hmm, let's try Apple Option Shift. Hmm. Hmm. Guys, I am horribly disappointed, and we need to go find Dave's house and egg him. Now, I'm sure either I'm not doing the key combination quite right, or it's in a slightly different room. Okay, I can hear the wife coming down to tell me it's dinner time. I can hear her, you see! Uh, so I, I have got to wrap this up, which is unfortunate. Um, but maybe next Fun Friday we will play around with this some more. Why not? Because BOS is cool. But here was an episode about installing BOS. Now you've seen the installer and watched it for way too long. Um, <laughs> coding projects and stuff says, thanks a lot, Dave. Um, <laughs> I feel bad. She's going back up the stairs now. Or I mean, to hug her real well when I get up there. Dave says it might be different on Mac keyboards. Probably. That's what I'm imagining. Option might even not map to the, the right thing. Um, anyway, what's a cool thing that I can show off real quick before I go? 
There's so much good stuff. Oh, uh, uh, window chrome shit. Yes, so, let's see. So the first thing is just that I didn't know, and I think I found this out by accident, because it's not like I was reading manuals. If you So, you drag the window like this. If you're not familiar with BOS, this is one of the fun things. Shift and click drags the title bar across the window. So, for instance, if you wanted to... Yeah, see, this is the other thing, is it inherits uh, Mac OS's, like, there is only, there is only zoom and not zoom, and there is no, like, maximize. If you want a maximized window, you have to drag it to the maximized size and keep that as your, one of your zooms. But anyway, uh, let's see, let's open another window. Nope, that just opens the same window. And I put the tab over here, and so you can kind of do tab shit in your OS. But the thing that blew my mind was, was it Action Retro playing around and showing me this? Or I, I saw it somewhere. I have to see, because there was a way to like dock the windows to each other that I wasn't aware of. But yeah, anyway, so you could like, yay, easily navigable, pretty neat. Um, but what was the thing? Does anybody say? Uh, Dave says, supposed to be there from 4.0 onward. Oh shit! Dave says Nathan shows off in the last screenshot there the Win 9x theme. Uh, I think he tried to drop in a link and it didn't take because you can't do that. But um, sh share with me privately and I'll, I'll put it on the YouTube social stream. Uh, it also has macOS and Amiga Workbench themes. That sounds sick. Uh, yeah. So does anybody remember the key combo for docking tabs? Because that's the part I forget. Uh, Which again, might be different on a Mac keyboard. Meta, no. Alt, no. Alt, meta. Let's look it up. Um, drag, drag the tabs next to each other. I don't think it's that straightforward. Yeah, like it doesn't just do that. There was a, there was a key combo, one second. Oh, Dave, Dave says, Toasty Text GUI Gallery. How, I mean, I've been obviously on that website so many times, who hasn't? And somehow I've never seen that. We'll have to work on making that work at some point. Anyway, let me look up this freaking key combo real quick. Here, let's switch cameras to uh, help relax the eyes. Okay. Um, BOS doc tabs. Excuse me, key combo. Okay, so they've got the shortcuts and key combinations in Haiku coming up as the first thing, which should be unsurprising. Um, but I would imagine that they would try to have kept those pretty, pretty close to the originals. Uh, workspaces, sure. Oh, okay. Holding... Really? I swear that's what I just tried. Holding Option while dragging a window near another window's tab or border will stack or tile them, it says. In in the Haiku docs, which, you know, it's not necessarily the same. Option, which again, Mac keyboard, probably different. No, nothing. <laughs> Windows, Meta key, I mean Mac key, Apple key, Control... Shift. No, that just does the dragging. You know this. Man, come on. Okay, we're clearly going to have to have a more actual playing around with BOS episode, but uh, I got to go. Um, so, see you guys. Wait, wait, hold up. Got to do it this way. Uh, let me see if there was any last minute interesting chat stuff. Wearworm says, I think it was the meta key. Drag the title on top of the other one. Should change the color of, color of the other title bar to the active color. I'm metaing the shit out of this thing, man. We're just going to have to read the actual BOS doc. Um, okay, so, yes. See ya. Love ya. Uh, bye bye